We are here at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, and I have no idea what this is all about. I've got Jill and Will with me. Will was supposed to do a bunch of research and tell me what's going on at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. How much research did you actually do? Uh, like 15%. 15 minutes, 15 minutes worth. You didn't, you didn't worth. even know it was a thing though. I'm the one that found it out. You did get us media passes. So we are here an hour before everybody else and a lot of these distilleries are dropping bottles. So before the lines get super crazy, we're gonna go see if we can't pick up some of these hard to find bottles. And then we'll get into all of the shenanigans and festivities that go on at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. Right behind us, James Bean. And see, I see over there some Baker's 13. So we're gonna see if we can't snag one of those before it gets out of hand. I need the Hardens Creeks, what you're telling me? Bourbon Life Podcast. Okay. He got all three of them and he said they were to die for. What is that up top? That's the, the lineage, lineage collection. It's a 17 year release from their Boston plant. So what you're saying is I'm going broke today? Yes. yes. Okay. After we leave here, anybody else got anything really cool? Four we need to go Four Roses, we need to go four roses four right roses. after this. Just release over there right barrel now. Strength. Okay. OESQ. And then if you go over there, you can get an Old Forester single barrel bourbon. Four Roses, then Old Forester. You got one of everything. Yep. Okay, so we're like $600 for one of everything. Y'all hit the like button for me. This is getting out of hand already. We're talking to the internet in general. We're going to do the Lineage, Hardens Creek, and the Baker's 13 times three. Will had a good time paying, but he doesn't know we're not making payroll. <laughs> Appreciate it, thank you. We're only like three minutes in and we've already got two boxes of whiskey. This is gonna be problematic. They went all the way to the truck, dropped off the boxes, they went to the old Forester tent, went to the wrong tent, then went to the right tent, waited through line, then waited in line, got a beer, then met me before we got to the front of this Four Roses line. Hope it's worth the wait. But now at least I have beer. We're just gonna go with the uh, single barrel barrel strength there. So you made this whiskey? 11 years ago? I was involved. I wasn't in this role 11 years ago, but I was still like, yeah. pretty heavily involved. Okay. So is OESQ the best one? Is that the best mash bill? Today it is. I think it was top three that day of the day. Okay. I can't remember if I have absolute favorite or not. It's oh, they're all, yeah, they're all fantastic. What's your favorite? I don't have a particular favorite mash okay. bill. I just like whiskey. Can we personalize it for you, Ed? Yeah, for sure. Um, put, put drink them, don't collect them. I like it. Hey, what's up, dude? It's good, man. It's good to finally meet you in person. Good to meet you. I saw you were going to be on a panel. What panel are you on? Influencers. Oh, I didn't get invited to that. There's zero influence here, okay? We don't influence anybody into anything. You got influence. You got people asking me about screwball and stuff. I should have brought the fireball keg. Oh, no. When we went down he to Orlando, we, he's down in, in Florida. We were going to take the fireball keg and do some stuff. Forgot what happened and we ended up like not going or like it was, it was maybe one of the trips that got shortened and we couldn't work it in the schedule. Like that keg is still half full. Have you bought any bottles yet? The KBF yeah. Old Forester, yeah. the good old 131 proof, this barrel rye. Okay. Is no, I love barrel stuff. The orange label barrels, like yeah. the their private blends, yeah. are some of my They're favorite good. bottles. And he got the, they went and got the Ofo, the old Forester for me. I call it Ofo because I feel insider. Like I found out people in Louisville call it Ofo. So now I'm cool like that. And so we met Jared over at the lockers and he said by Barrel Craft Spirits booth was a slushy for sale. It was absolutely fantastic. You down for a slushy? I'm down for a slushy. We are. Thank you. That's a good slushy. It almost has like a pina colada. Barrel Craft Spirits makes a mean slushy. Now all the people are in here. There are folks literally everywhere now. I don't know. I wouldn't mind a little Mictors here. So we're going to make our way through that line and see what they're pouring over here. I wish Mictors was dropping a special release bottle, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Toasted Barrel Finish Rye. I can't buy a bottle of this off of you. It just got released September 1st though, so it's probably going to take a couple of weeks to, to really see it out in the market. All right. So now we are going to try Toasted Barrel Finish Rye Mictors. This is good, but you gotta like a toasted barrel because this is very toast forward. I think I like just the barrel strength rye a little better than this though. Now what's the difference in a craft distiller and a regular? Craft distilleries are smaller. Like they just don't produce as much whiskey and you, a lot of folks have never heard of them. Like a lot of these small distilleries that we're focusing on with our content are craft. Spend a lot of time here in the, in the craft section. A lot of the big guys are allocated. If you wanna find something, a new favorite that maybe you can, you can get without any trouble, you're gonna find it here. Hopefully. How's it going? I know TJ. This guy. I have seen your video. Oh, I appreciate you came it. came to my hometown not too long ago, Springfield. Was oh, yeah. Not too long yeah, ago at all. You. you know who these guys are, obviously. Yeah. Have you tried any of theirs before? Ryan did this special just for the festival. That's delicious. As that's with everything I've had from Pursuit, that's yep. good wisdom. Are you a fan of their rise? The most rise I have that I like are bourbon friendly rise. There you go. You know, they're not like overly rye. So let's, let's give it a try. 
How's that for a ride? That's good. The more I get into rise, I'm probably moving a little further away from the bourbon friendly yeah. rise. This would probably be, I would say, midway. Like if you have a Michter's rye, sometimes yeah. it's hard to tell it's a rye. Yeah. And then, you know, then you have those that are like super rye. This is kind of in between those. So if you're just going down that rye journey, I think this is going to be perfect yeah. for you. Keep What's up, man? Keep Russo drinking over keep here. Me, right? uh, keep me liquored up. That's how you do it. This man already knows. <laughs> like what in the world is that? Well, it looks like three chords giving them away over there, so if you want one. Like here at a bourbon festival, that makes sense, right? It's not out of place at all. If you just take that down the street, you're probably going to get some sort of label. We've been here for three and a half hours. The first hour was just standing in line, mostly for that Four Roses pick we've got. Outside of that, the last two and a half hours, most of those have just been hanging out and taking pictures with folks that have recognized us from the channel. Appreciate all of y'all that have come up and wanted photos. I don't know what we're gonna do for the rest of the day, but I gotta have some food. Like we gotta find, big big, big boy gotta eat. What are we cooking? Uh, ribeye steak sandwiches, and then we've also got butterfly pork chops. It's hard to beat a ribeye steak sandwich, yeah. isn't it? They're good. We stumbled on the best one first. We haven't even They're, looked at it. Yeah. We don't need to continue don't look looking. Don't That's a pretty solid sandwich. We're gonna eat this. Then we'll get back in there and see what we can find. Now Jill wants a mixed drink. Is that what you said, Jill? We yeah. got to have some sort of mixed drink or beer or something. Right. Something a little lighter than just whiskey. So let's see if we can find somebody doing mixed drinks. How good is it? On a scale of one to ten. Well, it's probably a six because we're. I had a Bardstown uh, okay. Old Fashioned with the peach. Is that the and best was, one you've ever had? Yes, it is the best one I've ever had. The Bardstown Old Fashioned with the Peach is the best one you've ever had. Yes, with the Peach bitters. It is here? You had it here? Yes, right right over at the Bardstown on the main drag. Okay, well, we're going to we got to go give that a try then. You've got to. That's it's, pretty solid, though. It's pretty solid, but... Like, Maker's Mark makes a nice old fashioned. My daughters are 8 and 11. They know who you are. I'm like, yeah, he'll be there. <laughs> you better be on his YouTube video so I can see you. Here you are. Take a picture. Give me a pitch. What's the best thing you've had since you've been here? Since I've been here, uh, the seagrass uh, slushy. 100%. Oh, yeah. Got really it, good. gotta have it. So this Cheers. uses our Fusion Series. With, we use a 2 to 1 Rich Demerara syrup, Angostura bitters, and this time we use a little bit of peach bitters in there too. So it's got Angostura and peach bitters. Mm -hmm. All right, Jill, try it. Is it better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, the peach bitters are really good, That's though. Good. We'll catch up with y'all on day two. We're going to try to go visit a lot of the micro distilleries on day two, see what kind of trouble we can get into. I think we've nailed the old fashioned right here. Catch up with y'all in the morning. As oftentimes happens, we say we're going to go home, and then we did. So the Kentucky Bourbon Festival ended. We grabbed some food. We ended up here. Like, where are we? Uh, Evergreen Liquors in Bardstown. Evergreen Liquors in Bardstown. And they have a fantastic selection of whiskey. And this man right here is buying me pours. We're not, I mean, pro, this will probably What's be up? a YouTube hey, long form. If you want to be in a video, you got to buy the 20. The Victor's 20. The Victor's 20. I'm selling. Guaranteed. I'm selling the 20. I ain't going to buy it. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm not buying, but I'll take it. I'll take it as a charitable contribution. Uh, have you had the 20? No, I have not. I have not. I have, none of us have had it. Hey, there's a double eagle arrow here. Double you buy that one for me, too? Not, not the whole all. bottle. We're no, not, not if you buy it, I'll <laughs> open it. If you buy it, no. I will open it. $10,999 for the double eagle, very rare. Doesn't really fit with my budget, uh, although most of these don't. I mean, that's a 10-year Willet Purple Top for $1,000 sitting next to it. But if you have the budget and you want me to help you consume it, I will be happy to do so. How's it you gonna do a special TikTok for us? Is this like, I, I don't know, like what kind of special TikTok do you want me to do? So right now, this man right here has like thousands of dollars worth of whiskey in his hand. This is, what is this? Both of these are Mictors 20? Okay, can you go get the bottle so I could use the bottle to film with? Do you know what the secondary price of this bottle is? I know the uh, retail is two grand. Two grand. This is a $2,000 MSRP bottle of whiskey. And I'm not talking secondary. I'm not talking about you bought it for $100 and it's two grand. This is literally $2,000 MSRP, Mictors 20 year. We are at Evergreen Liquors in Bardstown, Kentucky, and I'm gonna see if they can catch me before I get to the door. <laughs> He almost caught me. We're going to give it a little review here now that I'm tired. Oh, God, that is so... Try it. You got one right there in your glass. Try it. This is not better than a mortgage payment, so if you're having trouble making that, but that is a fantastic bottle of whiskey, but $2,000 is a lot of money. We are now going to try Maker's Mark Cellar Age. Smells pretty nice. Looks good. It's a really good Maker's Mark. 
Gio, come try this. Here's your problem. My last pour was a Mictor's 20. So it does not matter how good this is. It's not a Mictor's 20. That's a good Mictor's bar. That's delicious. This is, this is a good one. You like that better than the 20? I like that better. Better than the 20? Yes. Don't worry, I'm not going to lie, dude. Like, I'm going to test. I like what I like. No. I don't know. I, anybody know a good divorce attorney? Good. This is good. But that was a mixture's 20. I mean, it's good too. But there's something about that. There's a little more robust to it though. So there's like cinnamon, but there's like, it's a little more full bodied. So I need to like a little more like burnt caramel to it or something. It's real, like that's a really good bottle of whiskey. But it's Maybe it's I not making it's not mixture's side. 20. But that's not gonna happen. I don't know what he paid for that mixture 24. But I'm not paying that for another one, that's all I can tell you. Probably the only time in my life I'll ever have a Mictor's 20 and it's your fault. Adam, man, that's terrible, nobody buy it because I wish I could find it. Y'all quit buying it, please. It's horrible, it's awful. Quit buying Weller Antique 107. Nobody should ever buy it again. If you happen to have wasted your money on it, as long as it was close to, close to MSRP, Send it to me. I, the P.O. box is in the description. I refund you original purchase price. So you bought me a Mictor's 20. Before you get out of here, you said you got to leave. Go ahead. Give yourself a shout out. All right. I'm holding your German Shepherds on Facebook. HH Animal Services. Long hair German Shepherds. We have the best out of Oklahoma. Come on, do it. Bring jerky. So if you need a German Shepherd in Oklahoma, this guy bought me a Mictor's 20. We're having Baker's 13 right now. What do you think? Average. What kind of whiskey are you drinking if that's average? The Stag Junior Pick. Oh, okay. Compared to Stag, it's average. Yes. What do you think, Jim? It's good, but I don't like it as much as It's a $150 bottle of MSRP, I think, ish. As Baker 7, this is a step up from Baker 7. A good step. Like, you're talking like not short dude step up, you're talking like six foot five step up. Oh, that is. I mean, it's Jim Bean. It's just like that kind of dusty peanut Jim Bean. If you like Baker's 7, you're going to love Baker's 13. $150 is a lot of money for a bottle of whiskey. I say that a lot, but that is that is a good bottle. Pretty good. I like that. That's a good, that's a good bottle of whiskey. This man right here almost tackled me as I was trying to leave with that bottle of, bottle of Mictor's 20. You looked hesitant. You didn't know I whether didn't or not you should it. react. You were, you were, to. you were having a hard time with the decision. I, I was. But you were going to do it. I, you were going to take me out. What you I think you to. could have. I think we would have gone two at the door. Well, we would have made it to the door. We would have okay. made it to the door. But then the bottle might have broken and that would have been ugly. You know, it would have been. I'm no J.J. Watts, but you know. <laughs> we did get a little, uh, a little uh, Blanton straight from the barrel, a little nice. barrel proof Blanton. Nice. If this bruiser thing doesn't work out, we are taking applications here, so. Okay, so I could just come here and entertain people every night? I don't want to be like security. I just want to hang out at the bar. I'm not good as a bartender either. I just want to talk to everybody all night. That's my job. Okay. But, you know, when I'm not here, you can do it. I, I can be the backup. That's right. All right, man. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Had a good time here. It's fun. Good deal. Day two of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. and We're getting here just about 10 minutes later than we did yesterday and we had to park a whole lot further away. So we're about to head up here to the line. Um, they're gonna let the VIPs in in about 10 minutes. Today, we're gonna spend a lot more time over in the craft area. See if we can't talk to some of those folks. It's Glen Cairn over here, my favorites. These are the baby Glen Cairns. Always more Glen Cairns. So we'll have the brilliant idea of going over here and trying to get the uh, the little necklaces from Three Chord, I think it was. When you go around and you're sampling, you can just wear this around your neck. Now we got a necklace with our Glen Cairn in it. We look like a, we got a proper problem now. We're gonna run over to the major distilleries and make sure none of them are dropping anything really special or spectacular that we didn't get yesterday. Then we're gonna go hit the craft area. So lessons learned. So what about Maker's Mark? I wanna make sure they're not dropping any like, like they didn't slip in some cellar aged or something. So they're not dropping any cellar aged over there, but you know, it's worth swinging by. So we're just like fast paced going from place to place to place. Have a deal. Does anybody know what they have? He has a picture of the list. Elijah Craig 18, barrel proof toasted, Heaven Hill 7, bottle and bond, and larceny barrel proof. Is it worth it for an Elijah Craig 18? I don't know. Well, I just have like four bottles at home, so I don't know if it's worth the line. Appreciate it. Love it, man. So we're gonna we're gonna beat Florida today, right? Isn't it Florida y'all playing? Yeah, we're gonna win. All right, I'm gonna be cheering for you. Appreciate you gotta pull it. You, it's it's your your responsibility. Y'all better pull it oh, off. I'm gonna blame hard. you if you don't win. All right. 18 year. That's, yeah, that's 
difference. Didn't have that yesterday? Exactly. I like the Elijah Craig barrel proofs. I just never like them enough to go back to them, so we always end up with a bunch of open bottles. We just found out that that was little book they had up there, not Booker's. They're autographing them. Who autographed them? Freddie and Fred. And they had a ham that they're shaving. Where did the ham come from? One of their warehouses. They have a warehouse full of ham? I don't know. I don't know. They said that it was... She got offered free ham said yes. Yeah, I just... I... They were shaving it up right there. We were right there at the front of that line, and we had no clue, and we end up here standing in heat. You're gonna go, you want to go get some ham and a... I, would, I wouldn't mind an autograph little book, even though I think autograph bottles are stupid. Sometimes I still fangirl out oh, yeah. and grab one. I'll, I will drink it, though. I'll, it'll look just as good empty. Oh, I didn't tell her to bring me ham. <laughs> She's going to eat the ham. No How many bottles of the barrel proof do you say y'all make in a year? Uh, no, each batch. Each like, batch. You do a batch run. A batch run is anywhere from, you know, two to 300 barrels usually. And then, of course, you know, that yield's going to depend on what year of product's in there. Yes, please. Appreciate it. Thank you. So two Elijah Craig 18 secure. I'm fully stocked on the Elijah Craig 18. We're going to be good for a while. So we're going to go see if we can find Jill, if she got these uh, little book, and uh, see if we can score some hand. Waiting for Jill to finish with the Jim Beam thing over here. While she's doing that, we're going to go get some samples of some of these larger distillers before then we go over to the craft section. So let's try a little Milam and Green. So what are we trying here? So we've got uh, a few different bourbons in a rye. These two guys are our limited editions that we just uh, launched. You said the unabridged is a blend of cash yeah, strength. Yeah, that's Let's right. try that one. Well, that's solid. So we've got, you know, Texas whiskey agent in Texas, Kentucky whiskey agent in Kentucky, and then we source a little bit of Tennessee whiskey as well. And you know, Texas whiskey gets a bad rap, and so we, you know, are trying to highlight those Texas whiskeys and how they can work. All right, next down this row is Rabbit Hole. They've got a cool little vibe here. Got a whole thing going on. I'm gonna try that single barrel when you get around to it. To me, it's got like more of like a like a dates or plums, kind of a dark fruit flavor to it. It's kind of interesting. Another locker. Lockers are key, especially if you're buying bottles, because who wants to tote those around all day? Will doesn't. No, in the intro, he said he wasn't going to buy that many bottles. Here's the thing. That many is not a number. Three is not that many. Three is not that many. That many is just like an arbitrary, imaginary thing that we came up with. Can I get a little book? A little book? Yes. 169.60. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. You want me to try the ham there? That's from our family. Absolutely. That's what I just stood in line for. Thank y'all. Oh, you're welcome. Give me some ham. Give me some ham. She's had it in between her fingers. That's okay. I lick her fingers. Oh, that's good aim. Proof queen, bring it. Come on, what you got, Jill? Yeah, one. My turn. Here you go, Jill. I'm an amateur. The rings are like flexible. It's harder than it looks. Yeah, I've got one of them that's weighted too. Yeah. TJ, can you hit these rings? I need this bottle of Angel's Envy. This man's gonna win me a bottle right here. You gotta hit three rings. Now, if you hit two, they'll give you one more throw. Even if all of you know, if you get two out of the four, they give one more. But you gotta hit three to get a bottle. That was pitiful. That was awful. That was awful. Of course, we waited till the general public could get in before we started headed over here to the craft area, and it is freaking crowded. Like I don't know what this line is, but this is apparently where I need to be. You having a good time so far? Yeah, it's been great. What's the highlight so far? Honestly, we really like Castle and Key. They did a release last year that was uh, just for the festival. This year they got a batch three and a batch four. They're only four years old, but man. Fantastic. Really? I might have to check it out. Have you had Hartfield? I have not tried it yet. Is this the best whiskey here? I mean, I think so, but... Why do you think so? Make your case. Being the only bourbon distillery in Bourbon County, we primarily focus on pre-prohibition-style bourbons. Okay. Um, so we use higher malts in our mash bills, single-pass distillation, so we're retaining a lot of those congeners, natural oils, and esters from those grains. So they're a little more grain-forward, um, a little more earthy. I think that that makes a pretty great, unique bourbon. Now, that definitely gives you an advantage. So right. good That's sale, good thought. sale. Let me <laughs> pick your best one. We got a lot of whiskey to try. Pick the best one. Well, I will say that these two are pre Style. This one is our brand new bourbon that we just put out here to this. So it's a more modern style bourbon. So I think it kind of depends if you want to go a traditional route or a more modern style bourbon. Would you say a two grain? Yeah, so this one's 80% corn, 20% malted wheat. Not a lot of people are using malted wheat. Let's do that. We got to try that. We may hate it because I've never had something like that well, before, okay. but it may also be the best thing if, ever. If you're going 
with a free prohibition one, I would actually recommend trying the ride first. That's the best one? This, in my opinion, this one's my favorite. Yeah. Oh, you gotta like the grain. Do you like the grain? I'm a, ma I'm a mash guy. I like, okay. I like the taste. I can taste the mash in the, in the end well, product. Hit me with that weeded right there. You just put it in that same one. We ain't got to be wasteful. So this is the double wheat right here. Yeah. You want to try the wheat as well? Yeah. I think I like that double wheat a little better, but it could be because now my palate has acclimated a little bit to that really yeah. grain-forward yeah. bourbon. No, that, I mean, the grain-forward stuff is really interesting, but that is, that's a that's solid bourbon. Not, that's the best yeah. one. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a lot of depth in that one. Was Appreciate it. Out of you? Yes, yes, you did good. You did good. You've got an advantage in Bourbon County. We're trying to find the best whiskey here. What's the best whiskey? You get one pour. So this is our straight single barrel cast strength bourbon. We come at sixteen point five. Is it the best one so far? I think of the just a few we've been to. Yeah. It's well, you're early lead. You're in an early lead. So we're gonna go juke, no, juke joint, uncut, unfiltered. What's going on, McCormick? Oh, I'll be doing all right, man. We are we're trying to find the best whiskey here. What do you think? It's pretty good. I do get the citrus note. Yeah, do you like it better than the red line though? Um I don't. All right, let me try that blue label there. This is a good whiskey. It's a little grain forward, it's a little youthful. Doesn't beat the red line or the blue note. Go try that uh, rose. They're sampling it at the uh Penelope, if you Jesus Christ. It. Okay. <laughs> Lord, I just literally just said I don't want to wait in the Penelope line, and then I'm going to wait in the Penelope line. Th thanks to you. Awesome. You want to get your sample? Bring it over. Well, that is good. Okay. It was. Everything Penelope's good. That's the one right there, the toasted oak. Toasted oak. Okay. It's cast strength, single barrel. That is pretty good for a toasted. All right, so it's been a long afternoon and we quit filming for a while. We had to give up on the going by and trying every single craft spirit here. There were just too many lines and it was getting too long and we were drinking too much in this hot Kentucky sun. It's like 80 degrees, but it feels like it's 95. There's a whole row here I've just missed with Bullet. Like Four Roses over here, Wilderness Trail. We did go to Four Roses to do the, um, the, bo the bottle first thing yesterday morning, but then we just kind of bounce. So new rips over here, and we haven't really tried all these whiskeys. So we need to go in there and give these guys a try. I mean, the wheat's good stuff. Thank you. This is the normal bonded bourbon. Oh, the single barrel, nice. You want me to try the malted rice? All right, malted rice. It's better than I thought it would be. It is, be it is better than I thought it would be. That's all I need to hear. The rye is kind of tame. The malt's kind of tame. Like, it yeah. all kind of blends well. I thought I would hate it. I think it's pretty good. It is. So this is a seven-year single malt. That's right. This man is, uh, he's, 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 he's okay taking a risk because <laughs> he keeps handing me malts. And so far, he's won. He's 1-0. He's got me. He's got me on the first one. For a single malt, actually actually pretty good i still don't love that malty flavor so i'm going to go to a bourbon all the time but there like if i had that bottle that bottle would get drank whereas there's a lot of malted whiskeys i've got that'll just never get finished what does it take to score an e.h taylor around here like what is that it's just an <laughs> you just stole a tube you're just faking people out you're just rolling around faking people out aren't you okay all right will we got it will you got it this time you've been practiced this like your 30 second try oh <laughs> Such a loser. Uh, we're never gonna win that bottle. It's not gonna happen. We tried, we failed. He got it! He got it! All right, let me see the bottle. Let me see it. Look at there. It has been a long day here in the sun. I'm about worn out. Like we have taken a million pictures, hung out with a million folks, drank way too much whiskey and had too much sun. But we are going to end the day. But I wanted to come over here to RD1. I don't want to try their Amberana because I just, it's not gonna be my thing. We're gonna try their normal whiskey. I was told these guys were the highlight of the uh, the event here for several folks. Let's give it a try. Let's see what they've got. This is what you give me? That's Amberana. That okay. That's for you. As far as Amberana finish goes, that's a good one. All right. I only give this like the really special. Okay. Am I a special person? Yeah. I'm giving it to you. Okay. Thank you. This is our straight bourbon, same thing, same match. Okay. This is a barrel strength. This is a oh. single barrel pick, 119 proof. Okay. The Lexington Bourbon Society picked that out. All right. That's good. 
Now that's what we're doing. Y'all should not screw that up with Amberana. All right, we're going to call it a wrap here on the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. We had a great time, met a lot of cool people. Definitely will come back and, and better yet, like we're here to network and I think we met a lot of folks that can help us do some really fun bourbon experiences and bring those to you. So look for those uh, in the coming months. Um, some fun things coming up. Will, anything you want to say to finish out the video? Will was wrapping the video and the freaking camera died. Go ahead, Will. Kentucky Barrel Ale Vanilla Age is top notch beer. I don't think it's vanilla age, but the, the vanilla. And See, what, I think the non vanilla one's better. I want to thank uh, Brentwood Police. I think it was for, Tim. I think his name was Tim. Tim. At Brentwood Police in California. With the challenge for, coin. For the, Show that up close. Yep, that is dope, man. That's a good challenge coin right there. So, appreciate it. Uh, catch up with y'all in the next video.